Hey everyone, my name is Sophie from Sophisticated Organization and today we're gonna to be tackling my office and specifically a lot of the paper clutter that I have, hopefully doing a little bit of decluttering and reorganizing. In my office, I keep all of our important family documents, some medical history, things related to my car, instruction manuals, things for our son, tax documents, important receipts, a lot of different categories. So I'm gonna go through them one by one with you and I have a fun project that I've been putting off for a while. I have a lot of instruction manuals and instructions for building things or instructions that come with a lot of different parts or leftover parts from building furniture and other items. And I have been trying to come up with a solution for how to organize those extra parts and all of those manuals. And that is gonna be a little bit later in this video. Once I finish going through all of that paper, I'm gonna show you what I've come up with. And I think it's gonna work out really well. Right now I am going through all of those manuals. I'm trying to get rid of as many things as I can. And then I'm going to start sorting them into categories. So I have manuals for our house. I'm gonna do one miscellaneous one, probably one for kitchen items and one for outdoor. Then because we just had a baby a little over a year ago, I have so many manuals that go with all of those items. So I'm gonna split that category into two. I'm gonna do one for baby travel and one for all other baby items. Now, when you have manuals, I will say, it's not necessary to keep absolutely every instruction manual. So many manuals you can find online. So you can get rid of the paper copy and look up the item. If you're gonna go that route, make sure you know exactly what make and model you have of whatever it is you're planning on throwing away the instruction manual for. I did opt to keep a lot of instruction manuals for really important things like our child's car seat that I wanna make sure I'm really, really using the proper way. Other things that I've used a bunch now and know how to use, like some of my kitchen tools I decided to get rid of or things that I can look up online. I've double checked to make sure that I can find them online. So I will get rid of them and rely on online resources if I need to. No, maybe I'm yours, maybe I'm not I think about it way too much and every single thought is making me Another category I keep in my office is warranty information. This is really important, especially for those types of warranty claims where you can get a refund or get an item repaired or replaced. I have a lot of those in there and it has the contact information. There are also some of those half sheets of paper that you tear off when you register a product and it's not necessarily for any sort of refund, but it's typically for if there's a product recall, again, with having a baby, that one's really important. If there's a product recall, I want to get notified and I want to keep track of the exact make and model of every item that I have. So I am holding on to a lot of those, but as I'm going through these files, I like to do this on an annual basis just to check in and make sure I haven't gotten rid of anything because I do decluttering so often. If I declutter an item, then I want to make sure I get rid of any warranty information, instruction manuals, or any other paper documents that go along with it. You wonder if I feel the same. Rushing through your veins And then when I say your name Bet I'm Right now I'm just going through all of my medical documents, so not sharing all of that, but I like to keep things that are important to my medical history. A lot of times if I'm asked about past surgeries or other things like that, I wanna hold on to that paperwork because I do have a few of those things that are important to hold on to, but other medical conditions that are no longer relevant or certain doctors that I was seen for, I can get rid of those papers and I will shred those. I had some documents that went along with our home. Right now I just found some other papers that were from law school that I wanna hold on to, just a few of them. And I also had a folder where I was holding on to some figure skating tests. If you didn't know, I was a figure skater, a competitive figure skater growing up. I also competed when I was in college and law school and actually coached skating after that. So I still had some old skating tests that I took not that long ago and was just reading them over 
one last time for a little bit of nostalgia before I get rid of them. I had another folder where one of my grandmas keeps sending me a bunch of photos and old camp letters and things like that. Look how funny this photo is of me playing football in middle school. I think it was some sort of a gym unit and I was wearing like the full pads and everything. I don't even know how football works. I am the worst when it comes to sports like that. But apparently at some point I played middle school football for some gym unit. I know paper decluttering can be so overwhelming, especially if you've collected documents for years and years and years. You have multiple family members, you haven't gone through it every year, and you know you probably should have. If you haven't, I would encourage you to really sit down and go category by category. Maybe you can't tackle it all in one day. That's fine. Take it part by part and try and get yourself to a point where it's a little bit more attainable and you can do a quick annual review of all of your documents. It can be really easy to feel like it's just easier to hold on to something just in case. If you really feel the need to hold on to something and you are bogged down by all of the paper clutter, if possible, you can always digitize things. I know that's not necessarily everyone's cup of tea, but if you digitize the things that you're holding on to, just in case and then hold on to paper copies if you are more of a paper person for the items that you might reference more often that could be a good solution for you but so many documents that people hold on to you just truly don't need So now I'm going to update the labels that I have on my files. I'm just trying to figure out what font I used last time so I can match it to the rest of the labels so I don't have to redo all of them because I want them to look as close as possible so it looks nice and neat in my file cabinet. And I also have those two file boxes back there. They are currently empty, but I'm going to use one of them to organize stuff for our baby Owen. And if we have any other kids in the future, I think it'll just be kind of the kid box. The other blue green box has nothing in it right now. I'm just putting it away and I will probably find another use for that later since it's empty. But I think something I wanna do in regards to the kid box, I've seen this a lot and it looks like the perfect organizing solution is to get one file box for each child. And I've seen the files organized by like baby, preschool, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, and one folder for each year of their life. You could keep important medical records in there. You could keep a couple of pieces of artwork in there, but it's basically one folder for each year of their life. So now you'll see all of the different file categories I have there in that bottom file drawer is all done. So I'm gonna hop back to my label maker and finish off that kid box. Now it's time to work through all of the parts that I was talking about. I had some on my desk here that were just shoved at the bottom of my file cabinet because I knew this was a project that I wanted to work on. This was from the Little Tykes Cozy Coop car and it has some extra parts in there. So I am going to use these zipper pouches that I use for so many different organizing projects. I actually have a whole video on all of the different uses that you can use these zipper pouches for. Did not include this one because it's a new thing that I'm doing, but I have a bunch of them. They're relatively cheap and I will link in the description 
description box below the zipper pouches that I use. They come in a variety of different sizes, which is really, really great for this project because sometimes the parts are numerous and other times it's just a couple of small screws or something like that. So I need just a really small pouch. Now I'm making labels for a separate set of folders that I'm going to put with my instruction manuals and my parts. So I got this bin from the container store, which is a bin that holds files and it opens up on either end, which I'm really excited about because I was trying to find a solution that will store the paper, but also store bulky parts that don't necessarily fit in files. I was thinking maybe I could put the parts in file folders, but that quickly seemed like an idea that was just not gonna work. So all of the manuals that don't have parts are just going into the file folders and labeled in those categories that I mentioned before for home manuals, outdoor, kitchen, miscellaneous, baby travel, and other baby items. And then if there is a manual that has some parts to it, I'm actually going to put that manual in the zipper pouch with it and then label the zipper pouch and put it on the other side of the bin, which I will show you in just a second because we're going to pop downstairs where I have a whole pile of miscellaneous parts that I've been collecting and my husband's been collecting. So wish me luck that we did an okay job labeling them before and I can identify what they go to and get them organized. we are down in the basement and I'm pulling down the bin that I mentioned that is full of just miscellaneous parts that we've been shoving in here for such a long time. I have all of my zipper pouches. I'm going to pull everything out and I'm going to try and identify what the parts are, find corresponding manuals or instructions, put them together in the zipper pouches and label them accordingly. I also want to mention this label maker is new. I used to have an old brother P-Touch label maker that died on me. It was actually my mom's old one and it lasted for, I don't even know how long, I would say maybe 20 years or so, 15 at least. These brother P-Touch labels are incredible. Mine, I will link in the description box below if you're interested in it. I did a lot of research on what type of label maker I wanted and I have multiple different types of label makers for or different types of projects, but this one is really great for kind of a in the middle. It's not tedious like making vinyl labels using a machine like my Cricut, but it also has a lot of different fonts and size options and different colored tapes that you can put in there. So it is not the simplest of label makers, nor is it the most advanced. Some of these things like that little cargo net that I just pulled out, I had no idea what that was for. So I'm pulling them aside. My husband wasn't home while I was doing this. So a lot of these things were put in there by him and I have truly no idea what they go to. So I'm going to make a little pile for him and see if he can help me identify what some of the parts are. And actually after I finished filming this video, he did help me find what some of the things were and was able to solve the puzzle. Although there were still a couple of items that he had no clue I had no clue so whatever system you come up with for keeping extra parts like this I would encourage you to label everything even if it's just in a ziplock and you use a sharpie on it it doesn't have to be in these fancy little zippered pouches although like I said they are relatively inexpensive so you can up the look of things and make it look extra organized like this if you want to but even just doing ziplock bags and a sharpie is a great solution just as long as you label everything Some
Something else that my husband and I talked about as we were saving parts and going through things, especially once he came home and I showed him what I did, is not everything is worth holding on to. Certain things you may need a replacement part for, or if you're gonna change the configuration of how you're using something, you need those extra parts. But other items, if you've already built the furniture, for example, and it's built the way that you want it to be built, it doesn't need maybe the extra screws that came with it. So you don't need to feel like you have to hold on to everything just because it came with it. I did have to switch a couple of labels around and that's something that's really nice about these types of labels. You can peel them up and restick them pretty easily, but in retrospect, what I would have done is I would have laid all of the parts on top of the little zipper pouches and figured out what things I wanted going in each zipper pouch before putting the labels on instead of finding a pouch, sticking items in it, labeling, and then moving on to the next one because I had to rearrange a few things, but it really wasn't that big of a deal. At this point, I was almost done with everything, just checking those last few items. And then I am going to start organizing everything into this bin. You'll see how nice and neat it looks. I'm actually, I think, going to flip things around so the labels are outwards if you open from either side. One side you'll open and you'll have the files with the manuals, and then the other side you will have all of your parts. And it is just the perfect solution. I'm so happy with it. I'm just gonna put a label on the outside and the project is done. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more.